Hello everyone and welcome back to another Watch Me Do Math video. In today's video we're going to be going over tension forces. This is a topic relevant to IB physics, A-level physics, and any kind of physics course imaginable that you can do in the last few years of your schooling. And it's often a difficult topic because examiners from any board from any country like to create and construct a difficult tension force involving questions that make use of devices such as pulleys or using multiple ropes on one object to complicate the situation such that you really need to know how tension forces work in order to solve a problem. The most important thing to know is that a tension force is a property of a rope. Each individual rope in a situation will have a given tension force that is applied to the bodies at the end of the rope and directed in whichever direction the rope is currently pointing as it is attached to the body. If you number the ropes in a situation, there will be one tension force that corresponds to each rope. And a good technique in problem solving is to declare that each rope has a certain tension force that you will express algebraically before solving any equations you set up through the use of your free body diagrams and whatever information you have about the question. For instance, rope 1 has tension T1, rope 2 has tension T2, rope 3 has tension T3. In fact, you can even think of a rope as a kind of spring with a near infinite spring constant in an ideal world, in the sense that it never extends, but the force just gets as big or as small as it might be in a particular situation before the rope snaps, but that's not usually something you have to worry about. So let's try an example problem. The first thing to do in this problem-solving situation is to find the number of ropes there are and assign a tension force to each one of them. This situation has three ropes, we're going to have three different forces. I mean three different tension forces, one for each, T1, T2, and T3. The next helpful thing might be to draw free body diagrams for every body that is involved in the situation you're investigating in the problem. Note that the tension forces pull on the rope attached body in the direction of the rope and use this information to create the three free body diagrams, in this case for the three bodies in the system. It's a useful systematic way of solving problems. You can see I've constructed a free body diagram for each body in the system and use the information that these bodies are at rest to declare that the resultant force in each of the free body diagrams is zero. If I say, for instance, because this is a one-dimensional situation, that any upwards force is positive and any downwards force is negative, we can use that representation of the forces to create three equations, one for each diagram, because the resultant force is the sum of the forces, the vector sum of the forces acting on a body. This is the equations you can get out of this situation. Make sure to recognize that this algebraic representation of the forces is only possible because it's a one-dimensional situation. If it were a two-dimensional situation, these equations, or influences you can take from the situation, are better expressed as vector triangles that end in and on themselves. Anyways, now that you have taken the physical situation and mapped it to the mathematics that you can use to solve the problem, you just evaluate to find what the three tension forces are. Here's the algebraic working. It should be fairly easy. If you have a question, leave it in the comments. For an explanation of the free body diagram, such as the diagram for body 2, note that there is a rope number 2 above body 2, which is pulling up on body 2 with a force of its own tension, T2. Likewise, there is a rope below body 2 pulling down on body 2 with the force of its own tension, T3 a force minus T3. And finally, body 2 itself has a weight of mg. That's why you get the free body diagram having these three forces, T2 upwards, T3 downwards, and M mg downwards. If you've got a more complicated situation with plenty of tension forces in multiple directions, do not fear either. As long as you are able to draw the free body diagrams of any bodies involved in the system, the same technique holds. First, you number the ropes and label them with tension forces that you assign to each of the ropes. Then you construct a free body diagram for the body or bodies involved in the system. Note that these four forces are not necessarily to scale, because this is a situation which deliberately cannot be solved with only this amount of information. Because I want to illustrate a point about the next step, which is converting this physical information to an algebraic model that you can solve mathematically. 
rather than using a symbolic equation like we did in the previous scenario, which was one-dimensional, the technique to apply to these kinds of problems where you have tension forces that go in different directions in two dimensions is to use a vector triangle with the information about the resultant force that you have. For instance, if the body in this scenario was said to be at rest, then you would know the resultant force is zero. The sum of all the forces acting on the body, as shown in the free body diagram, is zero. As such, it must logically follow that if you put these forces end to end as if you were summing up the vectors, it should loop back in on itself with the origin of the very first vector being the end of the very last vector. And you can construct that in any shape you like. A convenient one for this would be a sort of half octagon shape, which I will demonstrate. Constructing vector diagrams like this is a crucial part of solving problems that involve tension when they get too complicated. Because these diagrams help you visualize the relationships between forces that you will then need to put into algebra so that you can solve them easily. Similarly to how I said the sum of all the forces in the previous situation was zero, we can say the same thing here and write that down algebraically using vector notation. You can see how this is similar to other equations we figured out from the resultant force information and all of the forces acting on the free body, like in the previous question. For instance, the equation T3 minus mg equals zero for the third body, except this is in two dimensions. So in fact, the information contained within this equation is twofold, one for the horizontal components of all the vectors involved, and one for all the vertical components of the vectors involved. This is how information can be extracted from a two-dimensional situation involving tension forces. After you have all these mathematical equations, first you do the physics, then you do the maths, and in doing the maths, you reach the answer to the question or whatever problem you're solving. What do I mean by that? Perhaps in this situation, T2 and T3 and T1 and T4 have a kind of symmetry about this point. For instance, the horizontal component of T2 and T3 is the same but in opposite directions, the vertical component is the same overall, and the same goes for T1 and T4. The horizontal component is the same but in opposite directions, and the vertical component is the same overall. So the fact that the situation is in two dimensions lends you a way to extract double the information from a given situation. Just make sure you do the physics, the thinking, first before you jump into the mathematics and see whether there's anything you could exploit in the question, like the symmetry of the situation, to know more about how the tension forces are related to one another and the other forces in the situation. So that's all I have to say on the topic of tension forces. If you found this video helpful to you, then please do subscribe, comment, share this with friends who might be interested. It really does help. And until next time, thank you for watching Watch Me Do Math. If you have a question, you can leave it in the comments, or if you have a suggestion for a video or a question on this video, email me at watchmedomath at gmail.com. Until next time, see ya.